just three of us on a very big uh, bit of water. We're going towards the Ilumwan, Ilumwan, uh, the Isle of Monks. On a beautiful beam reach here. Just going off the uh, the east side of the um, U, um, of the uh, Udars. Uh, lovely. Uh, you can see the wind on the waves on the, on the water, and uh, I'm almost close hauled. Uh, so this is going to be rather nice. Uh, I'm going a bit slower than the other two others, and. Uh, So we're going to, and then we're going to, uh, going to have to turn north, and uh, but that, that, that will be the point when we take our sails down and go by uh, by motor. It is a wonderful place to be, the Gulf de Mobile. left uh, Aradon on the second day to go uh, anti-clockwise round the Ilo Moine. So we'll come up to the port du, du Blanc and hopefully the current will be flowing the right way. We just passed through Port Brown. I've just come off the conveyor belt, that's to say the Jumeau, when the counter current, and uh, we're now just passing in front of the famous uh, Neolithic uh, island uh, with some very interesting monuments, uh, probably to do with uh, the burial of the dead. And uh, rightfully, the the island is uh, is out of bounds to ordinary people. Only scientific people can go there. Uh, and that uh, helps to keep the place uh, in order. So there it is. Uh, uh, some of the some of the stones go into the uh, in, in into the water. There they are. We've got some more of these uh, dam passenger boats and they kick up incredible waves um, very very unpleasant uh, so that's the other side and uh, some other uh, uh, rem uh, remains over the other side here's a much better view of the Neolithic remains Now I've got some waves to deal with. and uh, uh, well my boat is among many others and uh, we're going to ha have a drink with some some friends we are now Saturday morning at uh, Aradon uh, still at uh, still at the our uh, boys and uh, there's myself and uh, this uh, yellow boat over there is Fredericks. There are just two of us today because the others are taking the day off for, uh, for various reasons and uh, so we're going to go through the uh, the Pot Blanc and uh, down the conveyor belt 
uh, which should be fairly gentle today, and we're going to leave the Golfe du Morbihan and go to the uh, Ile d'Oedic. Uh, so, uh, I'm t of course, I'm taking the um, taking the tender with me uh, uh, because we'll need to uh, we need to moor to a buoy there. It's perhaps a, it's perhaps a dry out port. We're going to spend the night there, and uh, and then. <coughs> And then we'll decide what we're going to do tomorrow, tomorrow Sunday. Try to uh, celebrate Mass uh, early in the morning. Uh, so this beautiful Saturday morning with a gentle wind. Uh, so we're going to be uh, uh, we're going to be sailing with the following wind. Uh, Frederick's going to use his spinnaker, and uh, well, I don't have a spinnaker. I have a, just have a large jenica, and. Uh, so he'll have to <laughs> wait for me sometimes because his boat is a lot faster than mine. Um, so there we are, um, Aradon, and then uh, take some more as we go. I passed my uh, uh, my tender to uh, Frederick uh, uh, because his his boat goes a bit faster than mine, and uh, even even with the uh, the tender on. Uh, even towing the tender, he's going, he's going faster than I am. Um, anyway, uh, we're, we're, we're managing just fine. We're, we're, we're coming past Aradon. We'll come past the, the, main, uh, the main port and the sailing club. And uh, those, those houses on the, uh, on the bank are absolutely amazing. It's, uh, it's, it's billionaires row here. Yeah? Uh, very, very rich people. Anyway, I'm not jealous. They have the responsibilities, but I don't. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a communist. <laughs> uh, oui, nous disons, uh, nous disons butterfly, ça veut dire papillon uh, en anglais. Uh, butterfly. Uh, ça veut dire ce que je fais maintenant. Um, avec la côte à la de, directement derrière. Et puis, euh, si vraiment je n'arrive pas à stabiliser le foc, j'ai une, j'ai une, oh, comment ça s'appelle? Comme tu as pour le, pour le spi, le, le, le pôle. Ah oui, il y a un nom pour ça en français, je me souviens plus. Ah bon, si c'est, euh, je pense que tu comprends ce que je veux dire. Euh, je peux mettre ça pour stabiliser pour le foc, mais pour, pour le moment, euh, pas, pas nécessaire. Uh, this is the uh, famous uh, uh, main port of Aradon, um, where it, they, they charge you uh, about 10 euros to, uh, to launch a boat, and there's no parking, either for cars or for, for trailers. So uh, I suppose you're supposed to, uh, well, just supposed to go elsewhere because it's here. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is quite snooty. Some, oh no, oh, there's, a, there's a little cabochard there. A very popular boat, uh, the cabochard. We've we'll just put on a bit of engine to, uh, to catch up. Because I'm a bit slow. And uh, uh, quite a lot of us going out. I don't know where they're going. We're going to have to see if there's enough wind to get us to the Ile de Wedic. We're not very sure, but uh, we'll see how it goes. It's, it's a Saturday today, and uh, tranquilo. Well, it's the uh, Cement du Golf. All this is, uh, I would call it a, a real boat suit. And, and this is just uh, mid-September. Uh, with nothing particular going on, but lots of people going out for a day sail, just as we are. And uh, there's just a great big yacht here on the um, on the starboard. He's just using his he's just using his Genoa, a very big one. Still having to use the engine. But we have the advantage of the conveyor belt, and uh, 
we can begin to see the open sea of the uh, of Port Navalu. We were doing fairly well, well, unfortunately uh, uh, only with the engine. But we might have a bit more wind out at sea. We'll see how we we'll see how things go. That's a rather interesting mansion up through there with a with a 19th century tower. I was just checking where Frederick was so I don't crash into him. Hmm, rather be a rather nice uh, billionaire's house. You can see the, the open sea ahead of us. Um, there's Port Navalo over there to the left and uh, we can already see the, uh, I think it's the Isle of Oedic, uh, I'll take my bearings. Uh, um, around there is Lamo Baden. Uh, last place where I launched uh, my dinghy um, in 2019 for the last uh, Semendu Golf because the Semendu Golf of uh, 2021 was cancelled. Um, this is lovely. We're going towards the um, Isle of Oedic. Uh, uh, we can't yet see it, but we're on the we're on course for it. And uh, we've got a little wind of about um, maybe seven or eight knots, pushing us along nicely. We're on a we're on a, um, we're on a beam reach um, almost. And uh, there's Frederick um, in front of me with my with my tender. And um, you see some of these boats uh, are doing are doing pretty well. They've got very big sails, got bigger sails than I have. Anyway, I've got a nice big Genoa there. I might sheet it in a bit and see if it uh, gives me a little bit more speed. This is the Isle of Edic where we st uh, stayed overnight and had a rather agitated night on our boats. There's the port and I'm going to pan round. This is indeed where I came in 2011 for the Naviclerus Regatta. And there's the little church up on the top of the hill and a small village of very ordinary houses. Uh, the local church, the bakery and the bar and places where people can play bowls, patank, as they say in this country. And that seems to be a shop over there. We're going to go and have a look at the church. Uh, the church of Wet and the custom of, of the exploiters of ships and fishing boats and uh, very naive, very brittle uh, Blessed Sacrament Chapel uh, and, the, and the altar there with the with, uh, choir stalls behind, wooden panels it's uh, the road, uh, the pulpit, which is now just used for a statue stand, and then around here there's the West Gallery, Stations of the Cross. This is rather interesting. Uh, a trip tea. I don't know where it would have been before, maybe above the high altar, before the high altar would have been uh, altered. Uh, beautiful. And the little ships hanging from the, from the boat. Uh, finally, we're underway. It's quarter past eleven. Uh, we didn't go to the mass for, for the seamen. We wanted to, uh, to take advantage of the wind and get back to the mainland. Uh, and I have my little uh, mass kit in the in the boat. I'll uh, see if I can say mass this evening. If I can't say mass, at least I can say some of the office. Uh, I am a priest. 
Uh, so there's Sir Frederick uh, in, in, um, in front of me. We've got a nice bit of wind when a uh, beam reach. So this is rather nice. After all that wind last night that knocked the boats about and uh, battered us up, up against the, uh, the pontoons. Uh, some of the paintwork is chipped off the side of the boat, but there seems to be no other damage. Nothing but a good paint job in the this autumn when I get uh, when I get back home couldn't uh, cure. Uh, so that'll be uh, I'll be I'll be doing that. Uh, in any case, there are plenty of other maintenance uh, jobs. I put the sheet in the sails. Wind is a bit on the right side, but uh, we're, in a, we're in a beam reach. Uh, but it's uh, it's a low wind, and it's going to uh, get weaker and weaker as we reach the uh, the mainland. And it's already uh, uh, quarter to uh, midday. So uh, well, we've still got quite a bit to do, and probably got a couple of hours. And, uh, and then we'll go for, to our place, I think probably not Malaya, to uh, wait for the uh, for the flood tide into the um, into the Gulf du Morbihan, and we can catch the conveyor belt uh, to get to the north of uh, the uh, the Gulf. Dolphins and they're swimming just next to us. Just by the boat, two of them going onto the boat. This is incredible, so close. It's quite hypnotic when you have a following sea. The wind just drops completely. So that's uh, why I've had to put the sewing machine back on. Um, there's Frederick. He's going quite slowly because he's fishing. Um, he caught a mackerel yesterday and we had a fillet each. Hopefully, hopefully we might catch two fish and then we'll get a little bit more. This is the entrance of the uh, Gulf du Morbihan. We still have a bit of current uh, uh, coming out of the Gulf, so we've got to wait a little bit before we can get in. Um, there are two red markers, uh, channel markers, that uh, show the, uh, the port tide. And then we're going to go and wait at uh, Loch Milherka until the, um, until the tide turns. I, I can't remember what time what time it will be, but probably within the next hour or so. Here's the, uh, we're in the conveyor belt, but it's uh, we're still going up against the current. Uh, so uh, these are the two uh, channel boys, four channel boys that uh, um, indicate the. Um, Entry into Loch Marika. I'm doing about uh, about three knots over the ground, uh, which is pretty good uh, considering the uh, uh, the current. But of course, it's the neat tides. So that's uh, there, that's good news because I wouldn't attempt this in the spring tides. Well, the the waiting time is over. Uh, the uh, the current is still uh, going up very slowly, but uh, uh, we should get it much more definite. This, this, it's the slack time, but it's still uh, some of it's going out and some of it's coming in. It's this is the strange thing about the Gulf de Morbihan. Oh yeah, this is something I've already had before. It's the the uh, the water current gives wind. It's quite amazing. Just watch this. All of a sudden, 
the Jenica built up more and more with wind uh, and uh, there we go and uh, the wind gives forward movement I had this once with my with my uh, uh, with my dinghy uh, when I uh, when I had no uh, I had no engine and they used the current to give me wind when there was no wind well there's a tiny bit of wind anyway there's uh, there's Frederick he's going over we're going over to the uh, the other side where there's a uh, where the where the slack water and uh, in a uh, in a short time uh, the the current will turn much more uh, much more positively very very strange the it's a machine and very with a very complicated mechanism both of us are sailing at the moment we're not motoring and uh, we are making progress in relation to the uh, uh, to the earth this is just the time when the water is at its most slack uh, it's just beginning to go in, in our uh, to, to our advantage it's uh, for the moment it's going in different directions but uh, we don't have any of those wild wool pools or anything like that, at least for the moment. For the first time, uh, I'm using the whisker pole with the uh, uh, with the Genoa. Well, it's not uh, it's not exactly good, but it's uh, most of the time it's it's ho it's holding it out, stopping it flapping. And, uh, the, uh, and the main in butterfly form. So, uh, oh, it's a bit slow. So either we get some more wind, or we're good to go back on the back on the, the sewing machine. Well, it was a nice try. I'm back to the old sewing machine. Uh, there's Rumble Barden and the end of Berda where there's a ford uh, where at low, at low tide people can walk over to the island and at high tide um, dinghies can uh, can go through the uh, through the strait over the, the the ford and it's deep enough to uh, to pass uh, for a dinghy and that's one of the features of this Mendu Gulf. But uh, we larger boats, we uh, we have to go around uh, the uh, the east side of the island. We can't go over, and especially now at a low tide. Uh, so uh, back to the old sewing machine with the alternative. Oh, there's a little bit of wind. Uh, uh, and uh, well, we'll see, we'll see how we go uh, on the on the white bit up to going up to Port Blanc. I might just go on main, main sail only. See how it goes. We're just passing the uh, Truy d'Aradon, the cell of Aradon, and it's uh, the sunset. An absolutely beautiful sky. And uh, it's a lovely scenery. This building over there is uh, the building of Jibberway. And uh, we're soon going to be on our mooring. Uh, it is getting quite cold and it's going to get dark. And uh, it's. Uh, I'm not used to, uh, to sailing at night. That's something you have to learn in time. This is quite exhilarating. There's not that much wind, but I've got the uh, the Genoa out with the whisker pole, and uh, unfortunately, rather badly mounted there on the on the 
uh, on the clue, uh, main tail there, and the others a bit sit in front, in front of me. But I'm doing quite well, speed wise. Uh, not bad at all. Uh, so we're going down to the Isle of Ilur, um, and then uh, to another island. I can't remember the name offhand. It's, uh, it's on the chart. Uh, we're going to have lunch there, and then uh, we'll go back up north uh, to of the Gulf with the with the current, and go to the uh, the port of the Isle de Moines, and we'll go to the bar and have a beer. We have just uh, left the Isle of Illyro, where you can see those uh, boats in the bay. And amazingly enough, there were some really lovely guys who came from the uh, from the uh, from the um, uh, gathering of Zef dinghies um, near Nantes on the on the Erdre. and the uh, they've come in two Skellig. Uh, uh, boats. Uh, it's a little bit more seaworthy than the, uh, the little Zef dinghy. And they were quite amazed to see that I had a different boat. And uh, very, very nice. It's, it's a real fraternity, a human fraternity uh, of uh, people who are all associated with the sea and boats. There we are, this is marine friendship. L'amitié marine. Finally, I seem to have a part of the world where I feel a part. And that's Brittany. The splendour of the Gulf du Morbihan. Well, people sailing, but also uh, the fastness of it. The Morbio being in Breton means the little sea. Today, Tuesday, uh, we're up to the east of the uh, of the Gulf. So this is the north part. We're tacking up towards or well, they're tacking. I'm. I'm motoring just at the moment, and uh, that's the that's the rising sun, uh, keeping out of the way of this big boat. And uh, so we'll be going along this coast and going to see some nice places. This is a place for people who love open spaces. You can't get more open than this. This is the north side of the Gulf. We're going over towards uh, Saint Eminence, the Cardinal. Oh, yes. You might find uh, Monsignor Vac uh, dining with him if I'm not careful. <clears throat> this is the Isle of Ilion we came to uh, yesterday. And uh, I suppose the uh, Francois Vivier, um, who designed the Ilio dinghy, um, might, have, might have named it uh, after this island. I'm not sure what the, the origin of the name Ilio is, uh, but, uh, but anyway, that's the island of Ilio. So here we've gone all the way around the Udars and uh, I'm sailing up towards La Truie de Aradon, the cell of Aradon. Charming name for, for a boy. The red one on the on the left, but I don't think you'll see it in the in the video. And then there's the uh, the green starboard channel boy and uh, to go around there and I'll tack and if I, I think I should have enough wind on the other tack to to get back on the sail and uh, Frederick's uh, there behind me in the little yellow boat 
Well, not so little. It's about uh, longer than longer than this one. That's a 17 foot. This one's 14 foot. And uh, Frederick has a friend with him, and I hope to meet him. Uh, I think we'll couple our boats up in, in the in the port, and then uh, and then uh, and then we'll probably have a drink together or something like that. That would be nice. He seems a very nice fellow. I'm still with Frederick, uh, who is with a friend called Francois, who is the owner of this wooden boat. Um, quite a quite a biggest vessel, about the size of mine, but completely unballasted, and uh, rather lovely a boat that he hasn't uh, sailed in for quite a long time. And I've been hearing some wonderful things about this uh, this gentleman. And so they're, they're together, and uh, Frederick has left uh, has left his boat uh, on the buoy, and we're together. Except they're, they're a lot faster than I am. They, there's a lot less more sail for their for their hull, and I've got a lot less sail for my massive uh, ballasted hull. Uh, so occasionally I have to put the motor uh, the the engine on to uh, to, ca to catch up. Well, there's a little bit of a wind. It's um, I'm in a full reach here, and doing uh, I'm doing quite well. So it's it's a beautiful afternoon, and uh, the whole idea was to go around the Ilo Man. Uh, that's the Udas, and the I become start to become very familiar with the uh, the shape of the church steeple, and there's a little village there and an island in the middle and then there's the Udim one, uh, Elon one, uh, the other side. I'm not sh quite sure which way we're going around. It's obviously the uh, um, Francois is, a, is, a, is a, an extremely experienced sailor so he hasn't, uh, hasn't told me about all his plans but uh, I'm just following him and uh, I have every I have very confidence in him. This sunset is absolutely amazing. On Wednesday evening and the sun is down and it's absolutely beautiful. We're now Thursday morning, the last day of lovely sunny weather. The water's like a mirror. Occasionally we get a tiny bit of wind, but at the moment we've got the sewing machines on and uh, our friends in front of us are being very, uh, very wise. Uh, they're rowing. <laughs> and he looks as if he's enjoying it. There were three boats like that. I've just uh, learnt that uh, these uh, three, these three old fishermen, uh, fishing fishing boats, um, they go out every Thursday and they take on passengers. And there's the there's the one that's nearest to us. The the two others are catching up behind, and they have the little dinghies alongside the the stern. Uh, and uh, so the, there's Frederick. Uh, we're just ghosting along for the moment. Uh, occasional, occasional spurt of engine to get us along a bit, or get us through the waves of a of a, of a motorboat. Well, there's absolutely no wind. Uh, we're all motoring. We have floppy sails and we're all motoring. And this is the second one of those old fishing boats. Absolutely beautiful with a, with a, with a, with a lug rig. And, uh, and no shrouds. And there's uh, unshrouded masts and there's just a, there's just a force day.
Ah, they're using the uh, they're using the dinghies with a, with, a, with an engine to propel the uh, propel the main boat because the main boat has has no engine. It's just. Uh, Well, the wind's completely dropped and uh, we're taking our jibs down. We're going to go back into port, uh, have, a lunch, have some lunch, and then we'll try again in the afternoon. Uh, it's a pity because it's, uh, it's, it's the last day. Uh, tomorrow it'll rain in the evening. So we're going to have a barbecue tonight uh, with... Uh, with Eld and Leslie, and then uh... oh no, so for motor. Et là, c'est un cabochard qui est mieux connu. <laughs> Not really has an engine. Going at very slow revolutions. All right. We're going to uh, recover our boats this afternoon from about three o'clock uh, when this tide starts coming in. Uh, so I'm going to take you for a little guided tour of this uh, this great ocean liner. <laughs> um, so we're looking looking at uh, a little bit of a messy cockpit because of the, the things I usually put in the cabin when I'm underway. Um, started making my morning coffee with a little Italian coffee pot and it gives me much nicer coffee to begin the day. Right, we're coming into the cabin. Uh, some of my uh, navigation things, uh, although usually being lazy I use the, um, um, I use her, uh, my little GPS in the mobile phone and uh, Little piety there. Um, this is my battery here, which is being which is being charged. You can see the little the little flashing point. Uh, that under there is my food and drink storage, uh, including soft drinks for to, to keep me hydrated. And um, uh, my water supply is um, at the stern there in a big tank. It's still half full. Um, here's the gallery of the stove, and what I do here is I have devised this little system recently. I take this out, so I can do it with one hand, and there's the stove underneath. I store the pans on the stove, so I take all that out for when I'm going to cook something, or, or boil water. That's on the little camping, camping gas uh, stove, uh, very convenient. And uh, this, uh, the, the desk is high enough that if, if there's a pan on the gas, I won't burn the underside of the wood. I was concerned about that when I first designed it. Um, so the rest of this, I have two little clips I close. And it can't, uh, then it can't go very far. Uh, that's my chart table. Uh, I'll put this there. That's uh, some pasta I'm going to, some Chinese pasta I'm going to eat. Uh, uh, a few little bits and pieces, uh, things like uh, little charts and uh, navigation books. Uh, up here there's a shelf here with uh, with a loudspeaker, various uh, chargers uh, for when I'm on shore power and uh, I found to keep me cool when it's hot. Nice little ship's clock, hardly cost me anything from Amazon. Um, electronics and, uh, and a few books. 
Um, that little, that plastic box in the corner contains chapel things, breviary, missal, um, uh, the bare minimum to say mass. Uh, my clothes are at the front. And underneath there, uh, behind, behind my pillows, uh, my personal washing kit and, uh, and, and, uh, and cables to connect to shore power when I'm in port. And then under here, a few, a few camping lights, a few extra camping lights. Um, I've got a box of, uh, box of non-rechargeable batteries and, uh, that's really sort of general domestic stuff. Here, I have three chargers for the um, for the mobile phone. Uh, that's my little Kindle uh, Kindle book. Um, and then, what I'm sitting on is the is the bed. You won't see very much. That's the covers and. Uh, a mattress that's a bit thin has my regulation fire extinguisher and a very useful thing to have in case uh, so um, there we are it's very small very cramped but it's rather cozy I've now undressed the boat as we say in here in in France and uh, this is uh, a last look at the place we've been uh, coming back uh, night after night to uh, to moor. Uh, this uh, nice little uh, chapel. All, all this is um, uh, an old uh, an old folks' home for the priest of the diocese of Van, uh, plus some other pensioners and. Uh, and it's also a spiritual centre of some kind. I don't know exactly what they do, perhaps retreats or something like that. And there's a nice little uh, 19th century chapel uh, with St. Joseph up on the top of the spire. I had to use my binoculars to find out whether it was he or, or, the, uh, or, the, um, or Our Lady. And then uh, it goes beyond there. And there's a little bit of a breakwater to uh, to protect against uh, southwest uh, winds, or rather from east, uh, from east, uh, from, uh, rather from east wind, just because that's the that's the east there. And uh, uh, so we've got a few a few a few waves, uh, a few waves from a, from a passing motorboat, uh, and. Uh, uh, Frederick also has uh, undressed his boat. We're, we're waiting another one hour, 20 minutes before we have enough depth to uh, uh, to get our boats um, onto onto our trailers because we, uh, we're uh, we're recovering the boats this afternoon. We'll be all three together, uh, or four of us together, uh, for three boats, and uh, that's a so it's been an absolutely beautiful week with this kind of weather um, and uh, not very much wind the last few days. There's a little bit now, but uh, uh, there was hardly any this morning. We went out for a little sail, but uh, uh, we just found ourselves using our engines more than anything else. Uh, that's Aradon. You can just see the tip of the church spire over the trees. Um, a very uh, wealthy district of uh, of Van, and uh, some rather lovely uh, some rather lovely houses with big gardens and views over the sea. Uh, so uh, this is uh, my last day of the uh, Golf du Morbihan, probably uh, prob probably until next May. Uh, when I come back for the uh, uh, for the Semendu Golf, uh, which they are limiting to 1,500 boats. Uh, in 2019, we were about 1,200 boats, and now there are so many people applying 
to be uh, to be registered uh, that they're starting to limit the boats except for people who've already been and I've been a few times next May will be the first time for Novalis but I'm red I'm registered so that's going to be okay and uh, so I will uh, say goodbye for the moment to the Gulf du Morbihan. Our eccentric friend with a, with a very tiny, tiny um, motorboat uh, with a 20 horsepower engine and uh, it goes go quite slowly to go out the port but uh, he's incredible this fellow. Uh, the boat he bought for 100, 100 euros uh, it was used as a bookshelf in a, in a, um, in a second hand shop and he spent, a, he uh, put about a, a year's work into it to turn it back into a boat. And now, uh, and now Frederick is, uh, is aboard with, uh, with, uh, with Francois. I don't think I'd like to go out there and in that tiny little, very, very tippy boat. You just see the two, two men uh, and an engine. That's about all we see. Now it's putting a bit of speed on. Now he's out of the he's out of the he's out of the harbour. Oh gosh! He's going to go for halfway across, and then he'll he'll turn to uh, he'll turn left, and then we'll see the speed he goes at. I don't know if. Uh, viewers on of this video will see ah. Ah, he's going a oh he's going a little bit further than before all right i'll turn another another video for when they come back and here they come back coming back into the harbour. We're going pretty fast still, uh, but of course they'll have to, they'll have, to cut, they'll have to slow down as they're coming into harbour. There's, uh, that's the 20 horsepower engine, just uh, two, two stroke. Oh, uh, it's uh, still coming back in pretty fast. It's an Italian design apparently. And here they come. I'm well, hoping that Frederick isn't too seasick. <laughs> and here they are. Mm. Mm. Incredibly tippy boat. Uh, Get on telephone. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>